I survived 100 days in a dream world. This place is full of new structures, insanely dangerous bosses, and multiple dimensions to explore. My goal is to get one of the top 3 armor sets in the game, build an entire town, as well as defeat 3 new bosses. If you enjoyed the video, 25,000 likes and 2,000 comments and I'll make a second 100 days defeating every single boss in every single dimension in this mod pack. But I'm getting way too far ahead of myself. Sit back, relax, and enjoy my journey into a dream world. I began my journey on top of a tree. Why of all places did I start here? Uh, what the? What is that? Why is this place already scary? To solve my fear, I tooled up by grabbing some wood from a nearby tree and making the almost useless wooden pickaxe. With that, I grabbed stone and headed out on my mission, checking out this giant creepy tower looming over spawn. Why is this here? Okay, how do I get in this thing? As nervous as I was, I still snuck in the wall, greeted by darkness. In that darkness was some bookshelves, which I stole, only to move on a bit and see a really fast spider. Nope, no, 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 I'm out, I'm out, I'm done. After leaving the giant Wizard of Oz tower, I stumbled into a village. The blacksmith had 12 obsidian in it, which is kind of insane, and a bit of iron, which for some reason I failed the process and never used. I also found a waypoint, a stone that can be used to teleport me around the world. I named the stone Huge No-No Tower and continued looting. I'll return to the oversized mansion later. The rest of the village didn't have much loot and I left her behind for another day. To end out day one, I slept in a cave. The cool part was that I met a firefly. He was just minding his own business, but he looked super cute. Kinda want one. Day two, I found a cookie cow. Now I wasn't gonna let that chance pass me by, okay? So I killed the cow for some cookies. Where are my cookies? Okay, so maybe that one didn't drop it, so I killed a few more. I feel like I'm just committing manslaughter at this point. So to ease my conscience, I continue my journey away from any cookie cows, as I just feel bad now. Thus, I went on to find a pillager outpost. Oh boy. I'm gonna be killed like the cookie cows. Everything there wanted to kill me, but I wasn't interested in death just yet, so I ran to the top of the tower. I killed a banner guy, but I didn't even really notice. This info is important later. Instead, I looted the chest, which had nothing special, except for some enchantment bottles, which was probably just the best item in there. However, I did finally make a shield, iron axe, and iron pickaxe. Totally didn't take me forever to use that iron, I was just carrying around. The outpost had a small camping tower next to it, and with my unknown bad omen, I summoned the British. And I know they weren't happy with me because they just started popping shots left and right. I barely escaped there with my life. I honestly kind of wonder what I left behind, but if I have to drink tea and mingle with them, I'm not interested. Then I stumbled upon a black cat in a building. Turns out a witch was waiting for me. So I slayed the ugly lady and stole her hat. Hey, what's up? I'm a witch. That was terrible. Now that I look baller, I can continue my adventure. And it took me to some pumpkin sacrificial lamb with the statue of orange and I don't know what's going on here. But at the top of this hill, I spotted a new Japanese style building. I have seen it before and I believe there are invisible skeletons inside. Yep, I was right, I'm out. However, I did try and run, but the buggers were persistent, chasing me even to a ruined portal like a mile outside the temple. There, I found some gold booties and I put on my new Jordans as I sailed off into the ocean in search of a better land. Oh wait, now I'm the British. Am I Christopher Columbus? As night fell, I got to a beach with a lovely little crab on it. I was gonna have crab legs for dinner, boys, but the man's too cute, okay? You cannot kill this little critter. Then I spotted a village in the distance, which didn't actually have a blacksmith, it had a chef? Well, let's hope he's good, because I'm hungry. Before bed, I stole some leather armor and hay bales. Taking the villagers stored up food supply really should have set off the guards, and so should sleeping in the restaurant but it didn't, so good night. Day three, I discovered instead of cooking my own food, I can buy it from the chef. He sold me a lovely breakfast of bacon and eggs, and I was off. Not after stealing his knife though. I need some sort of plunder from the village after all. Back to my mission of finding a home. The valley just next to me was beautiful and had some lovely chicken nuggets running around that I was able to chop up and serve. What, I did it right? I used a kitchen knife to kill the chickens. Okay, well maybe you don't kill them while they're still barking, but I did. However, instant karma hit me as this crashed my game. The ghost chickens were not liking what I was up to. Back on the high seas, I found a small boat with literally nothing on it. How can you call yourself a pirate and have no loot? Probably because this fella in the distance stole it, huh? The next ship was a bit bigger, yikes, and it actually had people on board. The treasure chest I found had three diamonds, a ton of iron, and a sharpness three iron sword. That's like a billion times better than the kitchen knife I was using. I can commit real crimes with the, uh, ahem, uh, save lives. Yep, that's... 
That's what I'll do. The rest of the ocean was long and boring. And by boring, I mean there's nothing out here. But by nightfall, I had found a lovely new lot of land. This place had a lot of tree variants, just none that I loved, so a rest stop it is. Day four, I was shockingly still looking for a nice place to live in. Yes, it's taken me a bit to find the area, but it has to be picturesque. If I'm gonna take on the monsters this world has to offer, I'm gonna need something nice to come home to. I was really close to finding it today though, as this biome had a really lovely lake inside of it, and everything else was just so vibrant. I was like 70% set on this place, but I moved on in hopes of finding a better area. Until then, I ran through a few new biomes, one being a swamp that had like a new tree variant inside. It looked okay, but who's gonna live in a swamp? Okay, other than Shrek. By the end of the day, I saw a giant mushroom. I really wanted this to be my home, so I wanted to check it out. Maybe no one lives here. Okay, it was a bit spooky, but there may not be those scary noises above me right now. If we just ignore them, they're not there. How bad could it really be? Okay, it's really bad. Clearly someone already lives here. I'ma just take my leave. I would say day five was much in the same, but I actually found something cool. A ruined cavern thing in the ground. A catacomb? I don't know what it is, but it had zombies. After killing them off, I broke the first spawner and got a really weak chest. I hope I got better stuff from down under. And no, I'm not going to Australia. Ever, actually. I hate spiders. Anyway, the catacombs were huge. The loot did not back up how cool this place was though. But I did end up getting one diamond here after fighting a war, I must add. I continued exploring mostly for the levels I would get from just taking down one of the spawners or all of the mobs. At one point, I almost got caught in a hallway with like a bazillion zombies, and the one thing I got from my trouble was a diamond shovel. I feel chipped. But the villagers just outside of the catacombs were about to feel even worse than me. Also, fun fact, I found some water buffalo, which is cool. They look awesome, and they didn't kill me, which is an upside. Anyway, I took the villagers' food and waystone. Now I can TP back to that huge no-no tower anytime that I want. Oh, and their wheat. All mine. And this blast furnace? You won't be needing that. Basically, the loot from the villagers was better than the catacombs. Just my luck. Day 6 was a lot cooler though, as I was back on the hunt for a nice spot to rest my head for these 100 days. Along the way, I found some blue turtles. There's just so many blue There's like a blue and then a blue and green one and like a, a green and blue one and- That's sick! I wanna keep them, but I can't. I'm not building on sand. So I had to leave them to continue my journey, which sucked because they looked awesome. Then I found a pillager outpost with a weird spawner next to it. I was not gonna let that thing happen. No way Jose jalapeno on a stick. The rest of the day was just walking. Walking everywhere. Walking like I ain't got no hair? By the end of day six, I had reached a beautiful mountain range with a pink and green forest. I think I had finally found my home, so I bunkered down and slept the night away, preparing to start my house on day seven. It was finally time. After so much running, I had found my home. It even greeted me with a rainbow. A literal rainbow was right the- Wait, what is that? No, don't tell me that is what I think it is. I stumbled onto a pillager campsite, which contains loot, yes, but also a heck ton of pillager tents that might ruin the land. All right, well, the new plan was I headed up to see if I could ward them off, you know, protect my land from them, maybe take it back. The first wave was a piece of cake. If you don't count everyone and everything shooting at the same time, a piece of cake. After wave one, I began to loot the place. The first hut had absolutely nothing. The second hut had a prot two iron chest plate, which helps and the third hut had prod frat three booties and after that it gets intense i ran into a small issue while trying to loot the higher up tents i fell in some snow it wasn't an issue because like who dies to powdered snow this stuff is so easy to get out of but um this tent had a trick up its sleeve i was kind of submerged and now i'm freezing which didn't help what happened next uh i'm dying i can actually die in this why is mining so slow what genius put this in the game Okay, I'm freaking out for nothing because I did actually get out of it and then warm up by a campfire. But can someone tell me why snow is more deadly than the ender dragon? Anyway, back to looting, not before making fun of a dumb pillager. Hey buddy, maybe you can eat your way out. Make sure you eat the yellow snow too, it tastes like lemon. Yep, he's gonna die down there. 
And I can't live in this amazing forest because no matter how hard I try, these pillagers will respawn and never leave me alone. Which means I gotta find another place to live. Back on the road. Before I left my unlucky temporary house, I looked underground and found the coolest cave in Minecraft ever. Like, ever, ever. You thought the cave update was cool? No. AGN, go ahead and put a few cinematic shots of this on the screen, cause holy cow, is this place spectacular. If I continue the series into like 200, maybe 300 days, I'm gonna consider building a mining base down here, cause wow, this is just beautiful. Before heading back up, I came to the idea that I was gonna use these blocks in my actual house build, so I'll be back here at a later date. On my journey, I found a small but really cool Japanese maple tree biome. If it was bigger, I probably would have stayed here, but I have to keep going. But not too far off, I landed in the perfect biome. I was walking along the river and it just hit me. The perfect spot for my house. This beautiful mountain as a backdrop and a river in front. This place is gonna be my new civilization. To get started on my house building venture, I cut down a bunch of cypress trees. Now I have passed many trees along the way and they all look awesome in color, but these gray ones, they just hold a new special spot in my heart. I don't know why, but I love these trees and I'm gonna use them to make my base. But first, nighttime. I don't wanna deal with creepers. Day nine, I began the planning phase. This house is going to be hard to make with such a hilly terrain, which is why once I had the idea set in stone, I began mining out the dirt. I wanna have a one to two story house, the middle being two story and the Wings? The sides? Nah, I like wings better. The wings of the house will be one story tall. But to really show that, let me just get rid of all this dirt. Okay, cool. So now that we have a flat dirt wall and some gray wood, not much, but I can make it work. The idea is that the middle section will have two stories and you can exit through the second story in the back. That makes no sense. Moving on, I finished up the day by doing a lot of terraforming, and by a lot, I mean a lot. I first had to level out this whole mountain section. Oh, like I said, a creeper is going to blow me up at any time. Nope, 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 no, 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 no. I'm good. I'm done. Thanks, though. Um, good night, everyone. I'm done. Back on the grind, I replaced the stone with dirt. This area will be used as my backyard, I guess. Then over to the side, nope, the wings. I had to flatten a bit on the right side. Not sure why, but I did. Then I took up a wall design. I would make the corners out of the cypress logs, then make the bottom of each wall out of strip cypress logs, and then finally the actual wall part out of the cypress planks. It's a lot of gray on gray, on gray action, but honestly, it works. The best part is that the roof idea I have will blow your socks off. So if you don't like the lack of color, too bad, just give me a minute. So I headed back on day 11 to the beautiful mines from before. The reason is the roof. I want my house to be magical, and those blocks have the ability to do so. Once I made it there, I just started picking away at all the shards in the walls. I quickly realized that these are different versions of amethyst. We have new amethyst in the game. Well, this game at least. That was easily a let's go moment for your boy. Cause you know what? I love using some shiny purple and now I get to use some shiny purple, blue and orange. I mainly focused on the blue for this mission, breaking two iron pickaxes in the process, but it was well worth it. Back at home, I started work on the full shape of the house. The second layer is only in the middle. So the walls weren't too hard to make following the same guidelines as the first story. After that, I was done and used the birch to outline the left and right wings roofs. The knockoff amethyst looked amazing when paired with my build. And halfway through the roof making process, I learned that you can make these into slabs and almost every block in fact, which is cool because Minecraft does not have that. Locked in with that knowledge, I made my roof look 10 times better and I'm very proud of how the gray log looks. I didn't think I could turn such a boring color into this. I started day 13 by working on the main roof. This section was a bit more my speed, and by that, I mean I made the roof medieval. Then I added in our lovely Allurite and finished off most of the exterior to the base. After that, I took my time and made a cool interior, or well, at least the flooring to the interior. But night rolled around and it was time for a rest. I mentioned that I don't like creepers spawning, right? Especially when I'm building. I have no focus on creepers when I'm building. Day 14, I woke up to a rainbow outside my house, which is an awesome addition, by the way. This is the best 100 days I've done so far. Easily. Okay. 
Okay, back to the house. To honor the rainbow's beauty, I had to fix up the exterior of my house to make it look even better. The birch roof was first. I added some slabs under the gutters. I think that's what they're called. Honestly, it just makes it look that much nicer. Then I headed deep into the forest, like four blocks away, and mined some ivy and leaves. I love the outdoor decor around me and I used it to the fullest, placing down ivy along the house so that it spreads and making a few bushes out of both green and orange leaves. Honestly, I wonder if I can find a blue forest one day. I began the next day by discovering a backpack that I can craft, which is great because it's time for an adventure. Unfortunately, I was only able to get the gold version of the backpack but it still acts like a shulker, a solid single chest extra while exploring. Oh, it looks so cool! Before I began the journey, I moved all of my stuff inside. Not that I organized it or anything, interiors take effort, and I'm kind of itching to go caving. So I placed it all inside and headed off. Once I found a cave, I started by hunting down as much coal and iron as I could, while still descending into the cave in search of diamonds. At first, the two days I was spending down here seemed like it was for nothing, but I soon picked up the pace after finding my first diamond. From there, I got a few more and was settling at a solid five. However, things slowed down for a bit, but that allowed me to look around the caves. I got a golden apple from a nether portal, which was for some reason spawned all the way down here, as well as I got some ash from urns? I don't know who stored their grandmother down here, but I would be offended. Also, I'm now holding someone's grandma hostage at the cost of $47.92. If I don't get that exact amount, I'll kill, uh, resurrect her. I'll bring her back to life. I somehow. I don't know. How about that? Moving on, I did get back into the habit of finding diamonds. The goal was to get enough for all diamond tools, a chest plate, and the next backpack upgrade. So I left the cave with 19 diamonds. Pretty proud of myself. I also mined right up next to my base for some reason, even though the cave I was in was very, very far away. To finish out day 17, I properly enchanted my diamond tools and armor with minor enchants. Not that they were helpful in the slightest, because now my sword can cut down beehives faster. Why am I now an exterminator? Now you may be asking why I was getting all those materials. Well, other than progression's sake, it was time to take on that giant tower. Oh, sorry. The huge no-no tower. I still have no idea how to properly enter this place, so once again, I broke through the wall and was instantly greeted by demons. A wither skeleton spider hybrid thing and a spider with 70 hearts. Once I cleared up the mobs, I gained a new sharp two diamond sword. I also broke the spawner and that was only the first room. Moving on, it only got harder from here as room two had another spawner, but this time a chest as well, which gave me some gold and bread. If all I get is gold and bread from this place, I'm suing. Sure enough, the next chest was just as boring, but the room wasn't. While trying to break a spawner, I ran into a skeleton spider on the ceiling. On the freaking ceiling! This is the stuff of nightmares, and I was sick of it. So instead of trying to climb the tower the normal way, I broke some trees outside and used them to tower up the, t the, yeah, the tower. Anyway, you may think I'm a little insert word here, for just not doing it the right way. But let's be honest, does being pushed out of every room by an army of spiders sound fun to you? No, no it does not. Spiders suck. And I experienced that all firsthand. At the top of the tower, I saw four new spawners. Lovely. But I broke the first one before anything bad happened and was able to loot the chest. I was getting a ton of diamonds, new armor pieces, food, books, bombs. What a questionable thing to give someone. But after I looted the first chest, I was hungry for more. So I broke all of the spawners and began looting the rest of these amazing chests. I did not think I would find this many diamonds here. It was great. After eight chests, I was at 51 diamonds. I mined like 18 in an hour, and this place just gave me three times that in four minutes. Absolutely the best idea I've had in a minute. <laughs> like I was gonna kill every spider in this place to get up here. What a ridiculous idea. Oh, and I did check the loot on the top floor to see if it was any better as you progressed. Does this look better? Okay, so yesterday was a great day for me. I now have full diamond armor and tools ready to take on the world. So I figured I would try just that. I wanted a bit more of adventure, so I went to find one in the jungle. Not very long later, I found this. What is this? Holy cow. Uh, this is gonna be dangerous. As soon as I set foot on the property, I was given mining fatigue, but I don't think it was from a fish. I just think that this place isn't gonna be easy. You'll see what I mean. Once inside, I was greeted by mobs, but of course I made light work of them. The real issue I face are these puzzles on the wall. Yeah, 
I have to solve puzzles. With my one working brain cell, this is not gonna be good. The first puzzle I attempted was this redstone lamp pressure plate area. Now the thing is, I knew right away what this was. If you play Minecraft Dungeons, there is a swamp level with this exact puzzle on it. The goal is to get every lamp to light up. Once I did, uh, nothing happened. Okay, I thought I knew what this was, but um, I guess not. So I moved on. Next was a very simple puzzle where you just walk on the line. I messed it up first try, but in my defense, it could have been the way that I was doing it. The game just didn't clarify the options for me. This one was a piece of cake as all I had to do was follow the pressure plates to the ending pressure plate. And once I was on it, the campfire lit up, which means that's how I know I actually did the puzzle correctly. The last puzzle still eludes me. I have no idea what I was meant to do and I kind of just unleashed mobs all over me. Um, however, it lit the campfire back at the dreaded redstone lamps. Thankfully, past me got a little bit smarter and turned all of the lights off after 10 minutes. Well, there we go. But with that, the center finally opened. Stage one was done. I'm ashamed at how long that took me. Bro, I, my brain already hurts. The next area was a lot easier because all I had to do in this area was run around and loot chests and complete a little bit of simple parkour. I said complete AGN. Why did you add that clip in there? You jerk. Anyway, after I first attempted all the parkour, I got to loot the chests I wanted, which really only had gunpowder or books in them. I know, amazing. The only cool part about stage two was the fact that one of the parkour sections led to a pharaoh. Although, aren't they supposed to be in like desert temples? Does a pharaoh rule the jungle temples? I don't know. Anyway, after killing him, I got rid of the mining fatigue effect, meaning I could just rampage his place now which I did. I passed a lot of emeralds along the way that I couldn't get with the mining fatigue before, so I kind of went back for all of them. After that, I found like the ruler's room, which had a throne of emeralds, and to be honest, this ruler's kind of broke. That huge no-no tower had more riches than this guy. Finally, to end out my eternal pain by being in this place, I fought some silverfish for the last four chests at the very bottom of the temple. I got some books, iron, and, and gunpowder. Not much in the way of tombs, am I right? However, after spending so much brain power at at that place, I was happy to be safe and sound at home. Oh, and I got a silk touch pickaxe. With a new and improved pickaxe, it was time to go to the nether. Those two things have less than zero correlation. Other than the fact that if I'm to survive in this world or any of the bosses I have to face, yes, for some reason, this is a boss I face later. I'm gonna need better armor, which is why I'm gonna be hunting levels in the nether for like ever. But first I have to explore the place. As soon as I got into the nether, I spawned in the amethyst cluster of hell. Apparently all of my dreams can come true. Geodes are everywhere. But the nether is outside, so I climbed out of my safety bunker. Ah! <sighs> oh my god. Yeah, okay, not so safe. I just had a mini heart attack. Why would a piglin scare me like that, dude? Okay, I didn't I didn't just experience it. I'm voicing over afterwards, but the fear in my eyes after that happened, it was crazy. And that had to happen just before I laid eyes on the most gorgeous nether biome too. Mini heart attack, then cool looking dinosaurs. Good representation of the nether. The first spot I found while exploring this place was an upgraded nether fortress. It looks super cool, but it still has very little use. I ran around it for a little bit, but the best thing I could find was a bow. So I took advantage of the blaze spawner while I could, but noticed a small teeny tiny castle. Oh Lord, what is that? I'll look at that intimidation later. I still want to kill some blazes. After grinding them out, I did end up heading to the menacing castle attached to this place. The blazes out front were super easy to take care of, and the inside wasn't all too crazy, other than the huge wither statue looking down on me. From there, I looted each small room, really only getting a couple of diamonds and some iron. This place is still better than the normal fortress though, 8 out of 10 upgrade. I did end up dropping off my inventory at home quickly because my plan was to get a lot of quartz and I needed space. Day's 23 goal was just purely quartz gathering. I went for every vein I could find outside of the hectic biome I live in. The cool thing is that quartz can vary from normal quartz to blackstone quartz or like toxic quartz I'm pretty sure. Since it's in every single biome and if it looked like the regular quartz, it just wouldn't fit. After grinding out some silk touch levels, I stumbled upon a bastion, which wasn't a treasure bastion, but nonetheless, I still wanted to see what was inside. Death. Death was inside. Not for me though. Everyone here was getting a butt whooping. Not sure why I didn't care too much about the loot inside and just wanted to rampage everyone in here, but good levels though. After one down, I found a newer version of a bastion. This one had a lot better loot by a long shot. The top was just chilling with loot. Oh, there's netherite here. 
and the bottom, uh, let's just say well guarded. Oh, there's brutes. I need to take this a lot more carefully than I think. Each corner of this bridge bastion, and yeah, that's what I'm gonna call it from now on, has its own separate loot. The first being netherite and the second being gold blocks. The third had a chest containing some diamonds and diamond armor, and the last place uh, kinda just had a trashy chest. But who cares, I got a butt ton of loot beforehand. The next two days I was still in the nether, but that's because I still didn't have enough quartz. So I spent a bit more time grinding that out until I landed upon a very weird structure. I tried to break in to see what was happening and each block acted as bedrock. I mined around it for a very, very long time and could not find an entrance until I finally spotted some coal blocks. But what I saw inside shook me to my core, glowing, blue withers. When trying to kill one, his face flew off and turned into a vex, as if I needed another reason to log off faster than the flash. This place was terrifying for sure, but as I sank deeper into the build, I got more and more loot. First finding a double chest with gold and iron inside, then a chest with some diamonds and books. Finally, the last good thing I got from a room was netherite, but the last room of this place, um, yeah, I wasn't ready for. I found some piglins, or captured piglins. Dancing piglins? I honestly don't know what is happening anymore, but I did let them out and hopefully they escaped this horrid place because I'm leaving. Back at home, I finally decided to work on the interior. I started with the upstairs, which took me a minute to realize what I had to do, but I first separated it into two rooms. One for my bed and a few bookshelves, and then one for literally just the waystone or any other decorations I get in the future. As for the bottom floor, I wasn't able to start too big of a project, so I left it for the next day. On day 28, I got to work on a kitchen. I figured out that I could actually make chairs, so I fixed up a table and chairs to eat at. Not that I will ever use it. Then of course, I added in all of my furnace types so that when I needed to smelt, I could smell any ores, food, or blocks. As well as later in the day, I made my backyard a little bit by adding in a garden, only for carrots and potatoes though, because I don't have any special crops. With the house finally complete, I wanted to work on my armor. Before that, I researched some swords that I could make. Turns out, the nether ruby I got for my journey is insanely strong when it comes to weaponry, so I'll be using that for now. Next was actually armor though. My chest plate was finished a while ago, but everything else still sucks. So I laid out all of the status of quartz we had just gotten and started to grind for my level 30, over and over again. My first enchant was protection 3, unbreaking 3, and hefty 2 on my pants? I have no idea what Hoofty does, but I hope it's not bad. Second was an Aqua Affinity Hoofty 2 again, Prop 4 and Unbreaking 3 Helmet. And last from my armor was the Boots, which got me Prop 4 and a Breaking 3. I also added Feather Falling 2 to the Boots from a book I got a long time ago. Then I also took my only mending book and added that to my Netherite Pickaxe. I totally told you I got that at the beginning of today too, didn't I? Anyway, yeah, now I have a Netherite Pickaxe. I used that to mine the rest of the quartz that I didn't quite need anymore. To end out day 30, I did a few light enchants on some books, and I found the coolest thing about this enchant table. It has a reroll ability, so I can say no when I don't like the enchants it gives me. I did this a little bit too much and ended up having to grab a little bit more lapis from a nearby cave. But once back, I was able to make a full sharp 4 book. But to put that on my sword, I needed a lot of levels, and I don't have either of those after what I just did. Day 31, I wanted to get the levels I had acquired, but in a less boring way. And going out into the nether and getting more quartz, eh, that's not what I wanted to do. So instead, I wanted to try and kill a few places full of mobs to gain XP. First stopping at a nether ship. Is it any good? Is there like cool stuff? Whoa, he's got a bow and arrow. After getting shot off by a wither, I should probably be a bit more careful. From then on out, I had to pay attention. The hull of the ship had two chests with seemingly basic gear, but one had a prop 4 book as well as some enchanted golden moss. I have no idea what that is, but it gave me an achievement, so I'm assuming it's similar to a god apple. Unfortunately, the rest of my day was spent checking out another structure in the lava, and shortly after that my game crashed, so no XP for me I guess. On day 32, I was back in action, finding a bastion to score some easy netherite, as well as getting a few levels from grinding the piglins. Then I made my way over to to another lava ship, but this time things were a bit different. First off, this one had a wither skull, and when I killed the wither guardian on top, I got one as well, which now makes two, so the wither is a real possibility. On the ship, I noticed that this is more like an end ship, and the prize wasn't an elytra, 
but possibly the worst netherite boots I've ever seen. They have a ton of great enchants, but Curse of Binding sucks so much. I really want to explore all of the armor sets, and I cannot justify putting these on. To end out the day, I think I found a boss spawner. Not that I have any idea what it is or how to spawn it in, but it has like bosses of mass destruction written all over it meaning I should probably keep a waystone here in case I figure out how to summon it. Finally, back to level grinding, after I swim the 400 meter lava dash. First stop was another Bastion, but this one wasn't a good one, and the piggies don't like me at all. Even in my new armor, I didn't want to get hit by a brute, but Bastion 2 was a treasure Bastion, so I snuck down and no one even saw me. I got a sharp 2 knife, which I totally took with me, and another ancient Debra piece. Ah, uh, time for another lava swim. However, with 31 levels, I was determined to go home. Back at base, I made my sharp 5 sword, which is amazing. It does 12 attack damage and is 25% faster than a regular diamond sword. Oh, and I got a globe on my last mission, which of course I played with a bit. I may have broke light speed as well. Then I realized I had five more netherite ingots, so I made all of my armor into netherite. So it looks like I have a full netherite set and a blood sword. And to finish out the entire day, I organized all of my chests. A tedious task indeed, but well worth it. Some older subscribers probably know why I do this in every single video. The next few days, I embarked on a journey to find a village. I need to finally get mending and even unbreaking to finish out some of my gear. Although the journey didn't exactly go as planned, on the way I found a massive... something. What is that? What am I looking at? As I approached the place, it became less and less clear what I was in. I was expecting some sort of terrible trap, but nothing happened. I soon found a supercharged creeper. The first time I've ever encountered one in survival or hardcore, and I let it blow up. Not on me or anything like that, but it was a huge explosion, and I should probably not let another one blow up like that. Once I reached the top room of this strange temple, I found a ton of iron and emeralds. That actually made me realize that this place is a guardian temple, just a few meters above ground. I even found a treasury with 18 emerald blocks inside. However, that was all I could get from the place as it only had one awesome room. Back on the hunt for a village, and one wasn't that far away. Although, I forgot to make lecterns and accidentally made fletching tables, however the waystone at the village helped me out. I began rolling two villager trades once I was back, and quickly laid my hands on a cheap mending trade. However, after such success with my first villager, it took another two days to get on breaking from the second. Yet, once again, I was stuck trying to get levels so I could put mending and unbreaking on my sword, which meant mini boss fight time. Eh, you thought I was going to say nether again. I honestly didn't expect to be doing such a thing, but while walking around the world, I found a woodland mansion. Yes, my luck's kind of insane. But this place is very, very scary looking, and I'm not sure full netherite can even handle it, unless I just beast my way through. The first few rooms were all just constant jump scares. I didn't want to go too quick as I have no idea what is behind every door. A few of the rooms had some banners that piqued my interest. They were honestly the coolest thing I got from my mission. After I stole the most useless loot, I headed to the basement to see what was happening. I found many spider spawners which didn't interest me in the slightest. However, this guy... He seems intriguing. I'm pretty sure I just found a boss. And yes, I'm gonna fight him. I ran up and my adjudicator fight began. He teleported away pretty quick, which made sense because my sword hits like a truck. But after I found him again, I just critted the guy out. Each strike attempt he failed never hit me. I thought this guy was a boss, but it was kind of just sadly underwhelming how bad he was. Maybe I should try a warden. He might actually pose a challenge to me. Although the fight didn't go as unrewarded as I first thought. I found an enchanted totem of undying. I have zero clue what enchanted means when it's put on this thing, but I equipped it anyway, and I hope we find out what it does someday. Wait, that would mean I have to die. I hope we never find out what it does. The last of the mansion was literally just slaying a few evokers for some more totems. The issue is, I still wasn't satisfied. So soon after taking on an apparent boss, I stormed off to find more adventure. I have more confidence now, if that's all this mod pack has to show for power, I can take on more. On my new adventure, I found a small ice fort, but with a village, so it didn't seem like all too much, until the bad guys 
literally started to appear out of thin air. What was that just fell out of the sky? The sheer force of this place became apparent when I was literally mobbed by a bunch of, it's not even a bunch, this is a mob. This is, this is what gang territory looks like. I'm being mobbed by pillagers right now, which is super alarming because my armor is taking serious damage and I don't have mending on all of my stuff yet. So I had to get to the bottom of this place fast. The top layer of the castle clued me in onto what was happening here, a new mini boss. The filer boss harnessed ice to the fullest, meaning after landing a full blow, it took no damage and countered with a freeze attack and some minions. Unfortunately, I didn't realize my lack of skill on this foe and continued to do zero damage. That is until I froze up for real this time. I had to flee for heat, which is why I ended up sharing space with a jack-o'-lantern. That's when I figured out my enemy. I collected all the light sources I could that should generate enough heat around my enemy to let me attack him. Too bad for this guy, he was easy to figure out. As soon as I had enough light around him, the mini boss went down no faster than a zombie. What a shame. At least he had a cool ice staff gift for me. I played around with it for a little bit and ended up finding a new mechanic, um, floating fireball in water. That's kind of cool, but once at home, I was finally able to use my levels to put mending on my broken armor. And to finish out the day, I turned my armor into gilded netherite, which allows me to walk past piglins in the nether and all around makes me look a lot richer than I already did. I went back to the nether with my new gear, but since I've spent so much time in here recently, I'm not gonna show you anything boring. So I'll only cut back to the cool stuff and speed run the boring. I mined a bit of quartz, ran really, really far away from the portal so I can place a new waystone for future adventures, stole some childish loot from a bastion, got another wither skeleton skull, and refound a lava ship getting three netherite ingots from it. And of course, the useless boots again. But by end of day, I figured it best to try and kill the wither. I'm really on a rampage right now. I went to a random waystone I discovered long ago and spawned the wither at a village. That's when I realized I forgot a bow. I'll be right back guys, you fend it off. All right, power one should do in a pickle. Okay, I'm back. Thankfully, the villagers fended off the monster long enough for me to take my assault. I first started by, wait, it's over? That was even easier than the adjudicator. Day 45, it was time for a new build, or at least material gathering for it. I started by grabbing a few more cypress trees, but the main goal was Japanese maple log. I need a bit of a different color in my next build because the gray could use a touch up. This wood looks beautiful too, and I pray with the red it will fit the orange version of the amethyst I previously collected. The next day, I did just that collect Lumineer. The pretty cave is back, so that's sick, but other than that, nothing else happened. Okay, so the next few days were all building. I don't know if you enjoy building or not, so I warn you this could get boring, although I'll speed run the details. First off, I started by... Wait, you don't know what I'm even building, do you? Well, let's just say I want a duck habitat, so I wanted to make a basic area for the ducks, so I'd hope they love me. All right, finally, it started off with a little shack, purely made of the maple logs following the same pattern I used for my house. Then I outlined the tower with cypress logs. Following suit, I made the roof of cypress logs and slabs. Honestly, not my best work, but I did my best. Wait counterintuitive. After that was done, I fully worked on the tower frame. The idea was to have a cypress logs going up, then strip them at a specific height to give it depth, as well as use maple logs as a full base to the tower. Once the woods were all put together, it started to look much better. I used the maple wood and lumineer to make a pointed wizard tower roof. I have to say the orange doesn't pair as well as I wanted it to, but it might work later on if you squint your eyes. With the tower done, I worked on a fence going around the small pond. Hopefully the ducks will appreciate the work that I put into this. After I finished up the pond, I made a small farm mainly for carrots and finished out my time by making a path from the backyard all the way to the new duck barn. Here's the build in full and replay more than gives it justice. I love the place and it turned out a lot better than I expected. Rate it one to 10 down below in the comments. Say like duck barn is a nine out of 10. If you don't like ducks, then just say two out of 10 and then leave the video because ducks are awesome. The next day I worked on my backpack situation and kind of messed it up a little bit. So I got everything for what I thought would be the next backpack upgrade. So once I used four of my netherite ingots, I found out I was wrong. This backpack is not even that good and can't be upgraded further. So I had to go through the process of making a brand new backpack and get it all the way up to the diamond tier again and then use the wither star to upgrade it. And this thing is so much bigger than the netherite one. 
Why did they do this to me? There was no warning or anything. I just wasted four netherite ingots for fun. The next day, I set out on an adventure to get looting on my sword. Why you ask? Because this game hates me and won't spawn any endermen out here, which is why I need looting at this point. Oh yeah, I'm also trying to go to the end. Not even for the elytra. I just want the last backpack, and I don't even use that much space in it. While I was talking, I made it to this. Again, I have no idea what this is. I'm just a magnet for mega builds at this point, but we should still check it out. Once I walked in, I was immediately jump scared by falling skeletons. So this place isn't nice. Got it. That didn't stop me from continuing up the tower, even as each level had a ton of new and really weird looking mobs. I am assuming these are skeletons, but that's not what they look like. As I reached the top of the tower, I found a chest with some diamonds and XP bottles. But after seeing the build from the highest peak, I realized there was a lot more to do. The next tower I got to had a spawner this time. It had skeletons riding giant phantoms. Thankfully, it wasn't too scary of a duo since my sword is OP and the phantoms target me, so they can't really fly away. After they were taken care of, I found myself another chest with a few enchanted books and diamonds. But this continued for a long enough time for me to stop caring, so speed run the chests. I Actually, AGN edited edit it so that no one can see what's inside unless they pause the video. That'd be pretty funny. Day 53, I found a village finally. So I started by making a little hut for my new friend, uh, eventual looting villager. Yep. That's his name. I am not good at naming, so it's fine, okay? It does a job and I feel judged. Stop that. You come up with a name then. Anyway, after a short film of time, he finally gave me a Looting 3 book so I could go home and sleep on Barney. If you don't get the joke, my bed is purple. After I put Looting on my sword, it was time to find a warped forest, but there's still nothing close to my portal and I wanted to use the waystone we put in the middle of nowhere to try and locate one. Thank the Lord it didn't take me long to find from there on out, I just started to find as many Endermen as I could. With two stacks of pearls to my name, I should easily find the end now. Which is the goal of day 57, find the stronghold and fall into the portal. To gear up, I made sure to have my backpack ready, find an okay bow, and get some blocks for the bridging. With my inventory set, I followed the eye to my destination. While on the trek, I saw some blue trees in the distance, and if I wasn't on my way to find the stronghold, I would take all of them. But missions first. I mined in the stronghold and realized finding the portal is going to be a lot harder than I thought. This realm's stronghold is a lot different than what I'm used to. I was going down different hallways, finding mobs at every turn, finding some decent loot, until I finally got to the coolest portal design ever. I placed down a waystone so I could easily come back here at any time and then lit the portal. Bottoms up. Why did I spawn so far away? Like, who coded this? I can't fly. I'm gonna die if I fall. Once on the island, I noticed that it didn't generate with all of the obsidian pillars like normal, making the fight that much easier for me. So after never missing a single bow shot, each crystal was dead and I could deal with the dragon. However, this wasn't a normal vanilla Minecraft dragon. If you try to hit it while perching, it would like smack you. Not hit you, just lightly tap you back so you know it's there. Seems as though someone finally upgraded the dragon. Too bad they didn't upgrade it to perch for longer, cause as soon as it flew away, I was disinterested and mined some shiny ore I found on the ground. The Lazium. It's supposed to be one step in like 90 of getting the best armor in the game, so getting it now is kind of helpful for later. Oh right, I'm finding a dragon. Well, on its final perch, I stopped caring about the little love taps it gave me and slayed the Karen. She dropped some XP and an egg. No one told me she was pregnant. Now it's time to get an elytra. I always forget how amazing this end is. However, it's been updated like 60 times since I've been here and it shows. First, I was chased through a new biome by an enderman and some very creepy flying end boars. Okay, I'm leaving them alone. After that, I found a buried end ship with actual loot this time. I got a few void totems which save me if I fall into the well, it's in the name, but I do have to now hold out my enchanted totem because the charm slot is now for the void totem. And once I finally found the blimp, it was missing the blimp part. Apparently this one had just freshly fallen and without any of its loot. Maybe pirates ran through here. But at the end of the day, I did actually find a real end city. I towered up the real blimp this time and the loot was great. An enchanted elytra has to be the best thing in this mod and the shulker boxes you get from the tower roofs is great as well. Now onto the first flight of the video. 
Ah, the joy of having an elytra. Before leaving the end, I ran into a phantom outpost. The loot was meh, but that's cause I'm stacked and the chase was actually insane. I had a mob of phantoms on my butt the entire flight home. I eventually juked them with my fireworks, but watching them behind me was insanely funny. Fresh off defeating the dragon, I was a bit upset, as it has a chance to drop dragon scales and I got none. But even if I did, I couldn't turn my gilded netherite armor into dragon armor, so I started work on a brand new set. You may be asking, why would you need a new set of armor? Well, first off, I want to look cool and see how far I can get in these 100 days, but some of the bosses I fight in the future require heavy armor sets. So after I made new diamond armor and realized I need even more levels again to turn it all into prop 4, I went back for a few quartz veins from our last nether trip. With all the levels I needed, I turned the last piece, my helmet, into prop 4. Although this mod has like 17 different high powered sets to it, this one requires that I work with diamond to netherite to dragon scale. To re summon the dragon, I had to fly around the nether for ghasts. Gas tiers are the only way to spawn back in the dragon and my issue soon arose. The ghasts don't like me. I found one right away, but the tier fell through a hole and into the lava. I really should look into some of these custom enchants in this realm because I think that there's one that acts like a magnet, which means that wouldn't have happened. Um, but now I gotta fly around for more tiers. I would show you like everything I did in the nether, but we've suffered enough of this red, so after killing all all of the gas that I needed, I was able to make the end crystals. Before I headed back towards the end, I grabbed a bow and yes, a few bombs, then went back to the dragon or the altar thing. Once it was spawned in, I redid what we just watched a few days ago, but this time I was like my own dragon, flying around killing all of the crystals. Also, someone really should have told me that poison arrows do not affect the dragon whatsoever. That was the ace up my sleeve, so instead of doing mass damage like that, I just had to whack him like normal. As soon as he was at 1 HP, I finished him off from a distance, and this time he actually dropped dragon scales. These things look sick, but the armor I'm about to obtain will look 10 times better. At base, I made the prop 4 diamond armor I just went through making into my second full netherite set, then added in the dragon scales. The helmet looked insane and the rest of the armor followed but the best part was putting it all on i had a sick dragon mask on me and it's got to be the best looking armor in this game but to figure out how to look better i added my elytra to my chest plate yeah, you heard me. I added my elytra to my chest plate. This mod has that. Not only does that armor it, but it literally gave me wings. I look so good right now. I mean, I, I bet you the dragon wishes it looks as good as I do. Thankfully, it's finally time to retire my old set of gilded netherite, and I get to wear this dragon skin. Now that I have some of the best armor in the game, I wanted to get to work on a bit more of our base. I haven't fully worked on it these 100 days, so I'm gonna get started right now. I began by clearing out some trees as I would like to put some sort of a town center here, but the landscaping sucks. That's when I realized my shovel is the absolute worst thing ever. So I came up with a plan for levels. Instead of dealing with the quartz over and over again, I want to make an enderman farm. So I gathered all that I needed starting with the stuff that I already had in my house, then venturing on to cutting down some leaves. However, I was missing one thing, wool. I required carpets for the farm and I knew the perfect place to get some. The end, a blimp from one of those end cities is chocked full of wool and that's where I was headed. On my flight to a brand new city, I found an end hog. I wanted to see if he dropped anything important, but after almost losing the fight to being knocked into the void, I finished him off from above and discovered an interesting secret. These guys drop a material that can craft netherite. If we continue this into 200 days, I'm gonna try and make a full farm of these guys. A netherite farm? Wait, that might be like the first ever netherite farm, and I could probably make a netherite beacon in record time. That'd be sick. Before finding an end city, I stumbled onto a really weird looking floating island city chunk thing? At the top, I saw why this place eked me so bad. This was a boss spawner, another boss of mass destruction. That's a boss of mass destruction. I'm gonna leave, thanks, but no. After flying away from that terrifying place, I saw my real objective, finally getting onto the mission of mining the top half of this blimp, which only took me two days to get here. Before leaving the end, I did find another end city, of which I looted specifically for this Terminite block. I've talked about other armor in the game, well this block is like step 1 of 80 to getting there. 
Notice how we're making progress? Oh, and I saw another gigantic temple, but I'm not doing that right now. And past me agrees. That's for another day. The next two days were spent building the Enderman farm. I started by letting lava drip all the way to the void limit, then bridging out 128 blocks or the two stacks of leaves that I got. I think by now you all know how this works, so I'll explain it a little. After I made my platform, I added carpet to the roof so Enderman cannot TP here, and finished off part one by making a spiral all the way up to Y42. The last boring part was making a gigantic platform on top, 30-ish by 30-ish blocks. I don't actually know the number. I didn't have enough birch to finish the job, so I used the maple wood and put in a design. I think it looks better than just birch. However, that's when the real kicker started. I didn't have a name tag, so my endermite would not even work, which started probably the most annoying bunch of days ever. To get a name tag, I would normally use emeralds with a librarian, but of course, I finally lack emeralds. So I tried to get them back. My first idea was to trade in as much iron as I could with blacksmith and toolsmith villagers. Unfortunately, this mod makes it so they don't 100% of the time have the iron trade. All of these villagers I've just gathered here aren't really doing too much for me. However, by the end of trading restock on day 71, I had over a stack and a half of emeralds. Nowhere close to what I need, but it's, you know, something. Which moved me on to plan B, overworld looting. Not a great plan, but it was my only other option. So I went through so many buildings, temples, random, I don't even knows, pretty much anything I could find that had a chest where possibly a name tag could reside. If this point in my life wasn't so obnoxious, I would give you more info. Um, but yeah, I'm moving on to plan C. Day 72, I launched check out scary pyramid in the end plan. I am praying that this structure will have a name tag, because if it doesn't, I might rob a bank. Thankfully, this gargantuan structure had the same three puzzles as before, so entering the place was super easy. Unfortunately, no name tag in sight. The bank idea isn't seeming too bad anymore. Though, while looting the Pyramid of Death, I did end up with another stack and a half of emeralds. So plan uh, W is in action. Back with my OG villagers, I traded for mending books, which then I used to trade for regular books. Basically just erasing the mending trade off this guy and hopefully upgrading him. If I can get him to a certain tier, he might give me a name tag. So the actual plan W is now in effect. I had the idea to use all of the enchanted books that I had gathered through these 100 days and erase all of the enchants on them. That actually worked, upgrading the man to expert level, but no name tags. So with one more restock attempt, I tried again. And finally, after six days, I could go and finish the farm with the brand new name tag I bought from him. I named the poor Endermite Hank and sent him on his merry way. With the farm all set, I began to see the Enderman rush towards the center, giving me some sort of hope. With this amazing sword, the farm worked pretty well and I felt accomplished, only for it to have taken me six freaking days, man. All right, I swear it gets better from here. Back in the overworld, I wanted to get back to improving my base. Oh, and if you forgot, that entire trip or frantic ride we just went on was to get a better shovel. So let that sink in, or just show the fact that I did actually make a max silk touch shovel and then move on. The project in question was a bridge from one side of my river to another. This one would be a very unique bridge, like nothing I've ever done before. I used cypress wood as the base, making eight pillars coming out of the river. Then I laid down an entire cypress wood top that actually dipped into the water. I don't know why I wanted to include blue in this build, but I used our Allurite to make the middle section of the bridge, an inspired work for sure. After the bridge, I used my new shovel to start terraforming the landscape I was interrupted from doing earlier. But in the midst of terraforming, I spotted a robin. This cute little bird totally wanted me to adopt him, so I tamed it up and set it on guard of the bridge. I have no idea why he did that, he did not deserve that life. Back to building. I set a path in place, not that it's a great path, it's just a small outline for the future town I'll be making. I built one big building that looks like a bunch of small buildings. The idea is to have a villager hall slash breeder here. Haven't actually decided. I used maple and cypress wood for the entire build, constantly making them accent each other so we didn't have much overlap. I did run out of cypress though, so day 76 was just me cutting down a bunch of trees. I probably should have made a better axe before chopping trees, but my brain didn't comprehend that, so I built the dragon axe only after chopping an entire inventory of cypress logs. Back in action, I added even more to the town. Tops of the buildings were added, roofs were beginning to take shape, 
and the real stroke of wisdom is showing, except for not having enough materials to finish again. I wanted a blue roof for some reason, but that happens to be the only thing that I don't have, Alluri. So back to that beautiful cave from before. I would make a big deal about how much I mined out of these giant shards of ore, but let's be honest, you just want cinematic cave shots again, huh? Roll them. On day 79, the build was finally taking shape, finishing off all of the roofs with that shiny crystal I just mined, and maybe using them for the floor as well. I can't help it, the block is insanely awesome, alright? I want this in real Minecraft. After another 6 days of basically just building, I was onto the last step, decor. I started out by adding a small storage stand to the front, left, side, side of the building. After that, I may have bought wine from a wandering trader. I might turn into a middle-aged mom with this purchase. I then went on to build another similar area on the opposite side of the structure, mainly to look good, but I used barrels, wood walls, and benches to give it a lived-in look. Actually more of a I think I can build look. To end out the night, I placed a bunch of leaves all over the place. Front, back, and side. None of them were safe, alright? I want leaves everywhere. But before I could go to bed, I had to fix this path. It just did not sit right with me. So I used my new lovely shovel I worked so hard to get to make a path through the city. Definitely not a city. Although, after all these improvements, it may as well be. The next two days were spent collecting all of the waystones I haven't used in a while. Having them on hand helps when I don't want to fly thousands of blocks. Although, I'm kind of doing that to just get them back. It's okay. It's fine. I had the time. I made room in my schedule because I had a plan. A plan to skip all of the turmoil associated with getting villagers. Day 83, I attempted to use a boat for teleporting with waystones, so that maybe I could take villagers with me. I was wrong. I actually can't. So, in Instead, I flew to the closest village and began making what I shall call the home stretch. This road will go from the village to a nearby lake, but the path has to be straight, which means mining through a literal mountain. Stupid villagers always ruining my life. To be truthful, the path wasn't that bad. Getting a villager on a boat and through the path wasn't even that bad. Getting a villager on a boat through the path and onto a river for like a five minute boat ride wasn't even that bad. You want to know what was bad? Getting this guy's house ready, then returning to him being dead. Yes, I let one of the villagers I worked so hard to get die. Day 84, I fixed my issue by getting two more villagers. I was going to originally cure the first villager, but he burned himself on my sword. I never actually hit the guy, it's just a side effect of the nether ruby. So two new villagers it was. Took me a little longer than I wanted to, but now I can make an infinite amount of them. I never have to worry again. And now that I have the building itch out of my system, I wanted to fight a boss, specifically the Blackstone Golem. This will be the first boss I go for in an actual fight. To spawn him in, I need the rare drop of a Piglin Brute. Yes, the only mob that I'm actually scared of in this game, I have to farm. So I went around the nether in search of as many bastions readily available to me. Sometimes I put myself into some sticky situations because the armor I'm wearing is kinda more than OP. The Brute's still enough damage to scare me, but after using two days to find and kill as many as I could, I got eight gilded blackstone shards. That's enough to spawn in two blackstone golems, which might be a hint for our future boss fight. To start off the next day, I built the blackstone altar. But right before I was going to spawn it in, you can see me, I'm thinking about it. But I did decide I wanted a bow. So I left one shard out of the equation. Speaking of a bow, I have literally no levels for such an endeavor, which means I had to make use of my Enderman farm. It definitely doesn't work as fast as I would like. However, I can't complain. Still much better than the quartz. At the enchant stations, I was able to enchant a power four bow, add power four to it, and then unbreaking and mending. So power five, mending, and a break. I kind of just said that. Back at the altar, I contemplated my life and spawned in the giant beast. The golem began building himself up while I was watching in awe. At first, I couldn't hit him, but once he locked eyes with me, it was on. I quickly learned that the golem isn't too strong, and I could take him on in a head-to-head -head fight. My sword was doing mass damage, and he was not. For a boss, he really seems easy. No astonishing moves or anything. I went back and forth from bowing and critting him out. Even in the blue phase, he didn't pose a threat, and I cleared the first major boss of these 100 days. Easy peasy. Yup. Oh, there's children! Kill the babies! But I'm not done. Time for round two. I think you understand how the fight goes, but in short, 
He has no major moves, I crit him for a ton of damage, and the fight ends when I kill his babies. Cool. But the really cool thing is this Blackstone Heart. When I right clicked it, it gave me two extra hearts. Little did I know it was a timed thing, but it's still a great boss drop item. Oh, and through the quest system, I was able to claim another six gilded Blackstone, making my total eight. With that, I was able to cross off another top tier armor, or I soon will be able to cross off another top tier armor. The next day, I wanted to work on a statue for the Blackstone Golem. His life ended uh, way too soon, and, and twice, so I wanted to quickly honor him. So I gathered a ton of Blackstone from the Nether using both my Silk Touch and Fortune Pick. I also kind of forgot I had this Silk Touch pickaxe, but it's worth it because if you cobble Blackstone, you can't craft it into anything. At base, I cleared a plot of land in the center town and laid out our statue. With a blackstone base made from cobbled and polished, I had a small idea on how to make this golem. The arms were the hard part. Actually, the whole body was the hard part. I had to make everything diagonal, and this game and diagonal do not combine. However, I, I can't see this material at night, so I had to sleep. Day 90, I was back at it again, trying to make this thing work. I don't think you know how much pain I'm in trying to complete a diagonal golem with a head, body, arms, and legs. But after a while, we got somewhere. Although I had one more thing I wanted to add to this man, his colors. The boss I fought was red and blue. Well, blue after I kind of destroyed him, but he was blue. And I found a way to make Blackstone just like that. So I spread it all across the build. I think it turned out great, but now the village kind of looks like we prayed to this thing and that is not the case. After making the statue, I wanted to finish off the base with some very last decor. And by very last, I think I mean very last. I added trees around the base so that I didn't Lorax my entire town, as well as used bone meal to make the land look natural. Then I spent the rest of my day digging out a future build. This place could be a great storage room one day, just not at the end of this video, so maybe 200 days? Day 92, I remembered that boss altar I found a long time ago. It has been out of my head for a while. I even labeled it boss maybe, I don't know yet. Once I was back there, I tried to figure out how to spawn this thing in, and there was a small pit pickaxe marker at the top of my screen so i figured maybe if i break the block i can get more info oh nope it didn't it just appeared i was not ready and i'm shaking now someone help me please okay realistically i'm not letting a glove take me down so as the battle commenced i treated a few blows just for it to ground pound me with its fist or with itself the whole thing's a fist. However, when it opened back up, I was able to actually crit the thing, giving me my only opening. The next move it thought fun to show me was laser vision. That destroyed every single block I was standing on, but each time it got closer, I was able to hit it just a few more times. As the battle progressed and he took more and more damage, he also got stronger, using a move that just blew up everything around me while I was blind. And then it set me on fire. Not fair if you ask me. Oh, I also suffered from hallucinations. I was seeing many eyes all over the place. Not cool, if you ask me. This is like some weird technique we're not supposed to use, okay? This is some ancient voodoo stuff. Get away from me. But the worst part was when he just left the arena. Bro, what are you doing up there? Thank the Lord he did not last much longer. And once he was put to rest, a chest with netherite coming out of it appeared. In that chest was random loot, but also the blazing eye. I have collected another trophy to display on my wall, but it won't be the last. To end the day, I worked on another new set of armor. Remember the Blackstone Golem? Uh, no, not that one. The one that I actually fought. Yeah, that guy. Well, I have gilded netherite thanks to him, and I want to make that armor set, which is what I'm preparing for now. To finish enchanting the armor, basically putting prop 4 on every piece, I had to travel back to the end to get some levels, and this won't be the only time. Right now, I'm getting levels for the armor, but after this, I make a huge choice to go for something kind of flashy, but I'm getting ahead of myself. After getting all 39 levels, I returned to the base to finish enchanting all of my gear with either Protection 3 or Protection 4. Since I'm not going to use this armor, I really don't care too much. But once it was done, I discovered a very interesting life choice I'm about to indulge in. I can put Sweeping Edge and Skulk Smite on my sword, but I would need a 72 levels. Yeah, that's... That's right, more levels than I'm worth, just so that if one day I face the Warden, I might do a little extra damage. Obviously, I'm not going to attempt getting the 72 levels, that would be crazy. So day 94 through 97, I sat at my Enderman farm grinding out levels. Yep, I'm going for that sword, because I want blink. If I'm going to have the best gear in the game, I want my sword to be maxed out. I won't tell you this was a fun process, but honestly, putting on a little Netflix and grinding out some levels wasn't too bad. By the end of day 90, 
97, I was back home and able to put the book upon my ruby sword. Ah, what an interesting way to spend my time. After that, I made all of the armor I worked so hard to get into netherite, then gilded it, giving me another top quality achievement. This armor was to sit next to my bed, as the other enchantment table armor stand is to be for more interesting armor, like maybe a warden plated armor set. Yep story for another day. Day 98, I figured it time for one last build. The villager town hall thing isn't really able to house the breeder and the traders unless I make a deck. Yes, I made a small deck in the back connecting them so when a baby is born, he can pick what job he wants and I'll imprison them later. Fun fact, I discovered diagonal fences. I didn't actually use them, but there's a diagonal fence in this game. Oh man, I should have used these so much. Second to last day in the world. And what did I do? Chop some freaking trees baby remember that 50 years ago when i was looking for the stronghold and i saw blue trees well i wanted to check them out again and maybe for future builds in 200 days if you guys want 200 days that is make sure to like comment down below and like the video so i know you actually want it anyway back to the trees when i rolled up on them i discovered that they were like rainbow trees or like blue with birthday cake colors inside. I have no other way to explain what I am visually looking at right now, but the blue birthday cake trees were coming with me and I can already see the storage room fully decorated with this wood. And yes, I may have gotten a full inventory of the wood, but you have no right to judge me. It's not like I got two full inventories of the thing, which brings me to the final day, my last day on earth. Wait, that's a different movie. My last day in this world. I wanted to go out with a bang. One final boss fight, making that seven, by the way, all right, seven boss fights. Three of them, I didn't even realize they were bosses. Anyway, the last man standing lives on, me versus a weird looking rectangle. Yes, I am taking on none other than the Obsidolith. This creature hides on its giant end structure and poses no threat to me. Unless it does, I've never fought the thing before. With that in mind, I used an ender eye to spawn in the thing. I swanned at the ready, it did not stand a chance. But oh, it had no effect on it. Okay, that didn't matter. The fight was still on. Phase one of the boss was easy. I just danced around him like a spider monkey, hoping to not get blasted. After I took his health down enough, he summoned crystals that I was tasked with breaking. I also took no damage from this guy, like whatsoever, which made it really easy to get to phase two. Now he did get a little trickier as his attacks moved faster and each blow would send me flying up into the sky. And then when he spawned in his health obsidian, he really wanted to slow me down. Like, dude, who gave the rectangle ice powers? It didn't matter, each stage was the same and he stood no chance against me. And after stage four, he was finished. A pillar spawned and I was victorious. At the top was a shulker with an obsidian heart inside. Another trophy I get to put on my wall. I guess I'll just have to figure out what this thing does in 200 days. Back at base, I was able to say bye to all of my builds and everything I had accomplished in the last 100 days. As the sun rose and my time was cut off from this world. If you want to see me survive another 100 days in this world, as I said, leave a comment down below and make sure to like the video if you enjoyed. As well as subscribe if you're new to the channel. I have some amazing videos planned ranging from a hardcore series in 1.20 to taking on a zombie horde and an apocalyptic event. Thanks for watching and I hope you all have a great rest of your day.